like I said before, I'm a software engineer. I work at Verizon Media, and uh, I work on Screwdriver. So what is Screwdriver? So Screwdriver is an open source build platform then for continuous delivery. I want to give a, you know, this is a landing page of screwdriver.cd. Uh, I want to give a big shout to my teammates and the amazing contributors who work on and contributed to screwdrivers. Just for the record. <laughs> yeah. So it's a collaboration with multiple uh, teams all over the world. Uh, of course, you know, we contribute, and uh, there is a Yahoo Japan team who also contribute that. And uh, there are some, um, you know, other individual open source contributors. I want to give credit to them. <laughs> okay, with that being said, let's go back here. We can take a look at the architecture overview because screwdriver, like uh, Jason alluded before, it's a relatively new technology. It's built uh, uh, around 2015, 16, and then we open sourced. 2017-ish, so we have a horizontal scalability built by default because it's newer technology. So we, when we build it, we have that uh, built by default. We have uh, multi-tier caching. If you see the diagram, you can see that we are trying to build multiple cache the place that we, we think it could. And also we support for multiple SEM, source control management support. So we support GitHub, GitLab, uh, Bitbucket, also, of course, it's open sourced and uh, you can implement the protocols and support yourself. So some features, we have a parallel and join. We have uh, fan in and fan out, that's the people known for. We also have uh, man menu and auto triggers. And we also building a community of uh, shared templates and shared commands. I've seen people like in the first talk and second talk is talking about Jenkins and Robar. And uh, we just happen to be another platform that solved the same problem for CICD. So today, I'm going to talk about the feature I have built, and that is Artifacts Preview. So what is it? So before this feature, we don't have, a, uh, let's, like you see, uh, users want to see their artifacts on the browser without downloading it. Before, we did not have that feature. We had more prioritized features we need to implement. But this feature, we have done that. People want it, we delivered. And uh, I want to talk about more um, implementation details. We also publish you know, a lot of uh, blog posts about that. This is right here. But uh, let's take a look at the design. Uh, oh, so this is a diagram. I don't, it's very typical. You have a UI, API, and they have a store. In this case, it's uh, we're taking advantage of AWS, so we can, so we get a S3, so you can store that in a store, um, but you can also do that uh, using local. Nevertheless, let's go back to the overall architecture. Because those are all horizontally distributed, so they are running into microservices, and that means they're not running on the same port, on the same machine. So this is a diagram we come up with. It's user login to the UI, send a cookie, get authenticated by the API. API send a JWT token, that's a JSON web token, and UI sees that JSON web token and send a request to see what files am I requesting, and uh, I'm gonna uh, validate it against the store's token, and then store will say, okay, you are validated, I'm gonna send a file to you on the UI. I wanna give a live demo. So before, all those ones, it's all, all in here, but uh, we, you could not, click to view it, you can only download it. But right now we have building functionality that you can actually view that. So for that split second, right, it's all intentional. I know it's, it is a, it's not a glitch, it's actually the code is running in the browser and it's handling that. The reason why we do this because we are a pipeline provider, we're providing the code for you guys to run. So all those artifacts or whatever, it's user generated, right? We need to have an isolated and more secure environment for the code to show to the end user. Let's say if I'm coding some malicious code in the index.html or JavaScript and you've been executing that without knowing what's in there. So we need to take care of that. And we used iframe with some um, 
attributes called sandbox. There are more attributes I added that. Is there also a uh, security content? But <laughs> you can look at the code or the specific PR I made. But uh, that has to be added there. So little details about that is first we're gonna check your uh, the files MIME type. That's the multimedia type. If it's actually viewable, right? If it's a binary, um, you probably don't want to view that. If it's uh, text, then probably you could. If it's JavaScript, we, it's a text, we want to view that. And uh, if it's CSS, right, you want to view that. So most people use this tool to view their test coverage and sometimes reading some uh, logs they're, they're seeing. So uh, maybe <laughs> hope this is not uh, too technical and boring. But yeah, we want, uh, some people, they want to view that. And we are using iframe to uh, create a mainframe and, and iframe is inner frame. So inner frame, once it's loaded, depending on the MIME type, we can see, oh, that is a file type we can actually be displayed by browser. In this case, Chrome. And then we are gonna to load that. And But before loading that page as, a, for example, index.html as a plain HTML, let's just load as text for now. And then we're gonna analyze what are the relatively paths it's being used inside this HTML, then load this as well. So once that index HTML loaded, it will send a, a trigger from the parent that says, I'm, I'm loaded, I'm waiting for instruction to load all the relatively paths. And the parent sees that, okay, it's a legitimate call, then let's trigger that inside the index.html. Uh, let's load all this uh, relative paths. Let's do another, uh, see the, it's loading the CSS and load the JavaScript. It's intentional. Maybe there's a better way to you know, minimize and show a loader, right? People don't feel like it's uh, out of blue, but um, we can also improve that. But that was intentional, and uh, that was a feature for uh, showing artifacture previews. Um, so why screwdriver? It's free and open sourced. It's battle tested, and uh, we are using that on scale. And uh, it's our ambitious goal. We want to take the CICD to the next level. And <laughs> hoping. Um, huh? And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. We can also, you know, uh, showcase the screwdriver. So uh, here we have uh, recently also uh, did some refreshment on our UI work. Uh, actually, um, so I have sending with GitHub. So we are supporting uh, onboarding using different uh, SCMs like I showed before. Uh, let's see how to create a pipeline. So, so every pipeline, it's the start to the end. So we can create a pipeline. Let's let me show you. Let me uh, have something here. So I'm creating a pipeline. So this is a repository I have given. Actually, I, I created that before, and you can see the UI has the collections, have tools. We have also have validators help you to you know when you define your YAML files, um, we can help to validate and giving error, uh, see if there are any errors. We can also show that. So the mantra is uh, pipeline is code. So we have a YAML file, it's all defined here. I'm just gonna copy those values. We have a validator, it helps you at the build time. It's not even in the runtime. It's gonna help you define any errors here. So let's see uh, if I just have some typos like uh, uh, unexpected parameters, let's say. X, Y, right? it's a valid YAML, but it's not valid and cannot be, rec it's recognized by the validator as error, okay? It's not not recognizing, it's parsing correctly because we don't we don't know what X, Y means here because we it's not following the convention we are giving. But let's say if you get rid of errors at the beginning of your build time, you're not even actually launching anything. Like 30 minutes later, I found a syntax error. So we have that built in to help that. Uh, then I have imported this, just like I showed a create pipeline, I put my GitHub uh, link there, and in my GitHub repository, I have a file called 
screwdriver.yaml, that's the convention we are following. Then we can click on start. And uh, you know, to, to one, one question I noticed was, okay, what happens if there is uh, errors on particular uh, rollout, and uh, how do we fix that? Right? In, in our convention of uh, screwdriver, it's all event driven, so you can just revert to the last event. Right? For example, this shard failed. Well, actually, I didn't do any changes. So let's say this one, right? So this one, let's assume those were failed. I can just move here and trigger again. So that's rollback, it's very seamlessly. We also have some matrix. Let me go back to uh, some pipelines that uh, has more data. So let's see. We also have this UI built in that give you some matrix that ho hopefully you will convince with your boss. <laughs> but uh, yeah. We have uh, a lot of features and uh, it's open source project. Feel free to contribute to it. And our repo is Click here, and uh, if you found any issues or feature request, you can file issue, and uh, we'll prioritize and uh, see you. Thank you.